Naše reality show nás zavedla na jediné místo na světě, kde mají tolik stabilní energie z přírody, že si mohou dovolit vytápět třeba chodníky nebo sbírat CO2 přímo ze vzduchu. Vítejte na Islandu, přímo v ráji obnovitelné energie. Země ohně a ledu leží přímo na středoatlantském hřbetu, který odděluje euroazijskou a severoamerickou tektonickou desku a právě tomu vděčí za sopečnou aktivitu i geotermální bohatství. Zjednodušeně řečeno, Islandiané mají v hloubce 2 km tepleji než my v hloubce 5 km. To se to pak vyrábí, čistá energie. Z geotermálních zdrojů pochází 30% elektřiny a teplo pro 90% domů. Ceny za vytápění na Islandu jsou suverénně nejnižší v Evropě. Island je bez zesporu geologicky úžasná v oblast. Je to oblast, která je vulkanicky predisponovaná. Zdroje, geotermální zdroje o výkonu islandských instalací v Čechách nikdy nemůžeme dosáhnout, takové geologické podmínky nemáme. What do you think about geothermal energy? Are you proud about it? Clean stone. Mm-hmm. Even the mid mill are more pollution than, than the geothermal. Of course I'm very proud about geothermal energy. Uh, I'm a geographer. Environmental uh, things are my uh, interest. It has always been there, so I'm, I'm not proud, it's just good. Mm-hmm. Normal, yeah, okay. good to have it. I think that this is one of the most sustainable way of the energy sources. Uh, though my main problem is that it really it depends on the location. So in Iceland, it is amazing that they have that much energy, but it is so it is not transportable, and that way it is like limited. Právě teď se nacházíme u největší geotermální elektrárny na Islandu. Je to také osmá největší na světě. Jmenuje se Hetlisejdy, což v překladu znamená jeskyní vřesoviště. So this is a quite important power plant in terms of both electricity and hot water production over here in Iceland. So just talk a bit about numbers here. This is the largest geothermal power plant that we have over here in Iceland out of eight. The total capacity of eight power plants is 755 megawatts electrical. And this, just this power plant covers around 303 megawatts in terms of electricity. So we're literally covering up around 40% of the main electricity production coming up from geothermal. You'd be kind of be disappointed. So this is actually the second largest, like high, highest, let me say, temperature area here in Iceland. There are several high temperature areas, and most of them, they're very close to central volcanoes. So fun fact, the background view of Ras, Henkit, it's the correct name, of course, of this volcanic system. This is not just a mountain, it's also a volcanic system that last erupted 2,000 years ago. So, yep, we said this is a volcanic system indeed. We are just totally safe, of course, Thunk and I are apt. Just behind this hill, though, we have most of our production wells. So, what am I saying? Yet, we, like uh, the production wells, around 47 of them, we need to go 2.5 kilometer step, approximately. We can go a bit deeper, but we don't need to because we have really high temperatures of, on average, 300 degrees Celsius. So it's pretty high. So the production wells, they look like this igloos, this um, very uh, nice and cool dome. Over there, we have drillings. It goes 2.5 kilometers depth. We have pretty high temperatures, as we said, and that's where we extract three things. What are those things? Water, lots of it, steam, and as you are very close to the geothermal area, you are definitely smelling for you here a lot of like sulfide, for example, hydrogen sulfide. So in front of us, these big tanks over here, they're what we call separators. And as the name suggests, over here, we do separate water and steam. Why? We need to do this process because we only need the steam for the electricity production. No water into that. Steam runs as a turbine, produces, of course, electricity in the generator. We amp it up to 20K, 
and it's sent into the national grid. And that's the first part of the electricity though. Now very, very simply, the second part of the hot water, which you may think, okay, we get lots of water, we separated it, it's pretty hot, we send it to Reykjavik, right? No, we can't do that. And we can't do that, yes, because this water that we get from 2.5 kilometers set, it's pretty chemical rich, let me say. So what happens? This water is really hot. Instead of sending it to Reykjavik, we get it, we go into heat exchangers. Heat exchangers, we fill them up with cold, fresh water, and into that we have tubes. These tubes contain the really hot geothermal water and just by heat transferring, we're heating up cold fresh water up to 85 degrees Celsius and now we're ready. And we send it to Reykjavik. To finish, the geothermal water in the tubes is literally waste, it's a byproduct. So what do we need to do? We have the reinjection wells, as we said earlier, where we pump it back into the ground. Nejenom, že geotermální elektrárna Hetlisejdy nevytváří téměř žádné emise, ona dokonce snižuje i ty, které sama nevytvoří. Dámy a pánové, představuji vám největší zařízení na světě, které zachycuje CO2 přímo ze vzduchu a ukládá ho do země. So we are on over here at Kanatrnan and just over, over outside um, this right hand side of the power plant you're gonna see the really black boxes, black fans, we have like containers over there. It's actually Climeworks, is a Swiss company and they started operating Orca, this uh, director capture facility since 2021 over here. To be quite honest, it's not very economically feasible to have like Climeworks, like a director capture facility in general, in another place other than Iceland. Economics really work over here for two reasons. One is because you have renewable sources of energy, so not a lot of CO2 emissions coming up from your base, of course. And the second is that you have pretty low electricity prices, especially if you are very close, not even 1.5 kilometers away from the source of energy. So that is really important and for the time being and the technology we have, it won't work out unfortunately in other locations. Samozřejmě je to takový krok zoufalosti podle mého soudu, který chtěl ukázat, že i tento přístup je možný, že i státy, které neprodukují žádný CO2, jako je třeba Island, se mohou podílet na jeho zachycování. To je můj názor. Když budete ten CO2 zachycovat ze spalin, kde ho máte 15%, tak budete mít poměrně rozumné provozní náklady. Když ho budete zachycovat ze vzduchu, kde ho máte 4%, tak toho vzduchu musíte prosát tím materiálem, kde se ten CO2 zachycuje odpovídajícím způsobem více, no a podle toho budou vypadat ty provozní náklady. Nyní si ukážeme první geotermální elektrárnu na světě, která v kombinovaném cyklu vyrábí elektřinu a teplou vodu pro centrální zásobování teplem. Je to už od 70. let a jmenuje se Svart Sen Gy. century we transitioned from using the fossil fuels to heat up our houses or oil boilers into using geothermal energy. The estimated cost savings from, for not having to import oil to Iceland for, instead of using uh, the geothermal resource is around, I don't know, 700 million dollars a year or something, which is a huge amount. Uh, when you think about the, the economic crisis that we had in 2008, if we would still be importing oil in, in, in that uh, quantities, there probably would have been a lot, lot worse. So the geothermal resource in Iceland is, is very important and we use it, use it a lot. In, in every small town in Iceland there's a heated outdoor swimming pool. Uh, we have a lot of geothermal hot tub at our houses. We heat up uh, pavements, we heat up streets, crossroads and things like that. So we use the geothermal resource quite well. Svartsinki and actually all of HS Orca power production is Baseload, so we produce exactly the same amount of electricity every hour of the year. So it's not good for balancing because you would use a hydro reservoir for balancing the power grid. But what we do is we offer stable production onto the grid. The geothermal resource is, I mean, you say inexhaustible, of, of course, I mean, the heat in the ground is never going to go away. But at each geothermal site, you have to make sure that you're striking a balance between 
utilization that's sustainable because you can kind of deplete a geothermal resource for a period of time. So you go in, if you go in too strong, you take too much out of it, the area will cool down. It will heat up again in, in, in 10, 20, 30, 40 years, but you will deplete the resource for the time being. I mean, we definitely need to add more power plants in Iceland. We need to increase our power production because uh, the demand is really high in Iceland for electricity. One of the things that make HS Orca a pretty unique company in, in, in the geothermal sector in the world is that we have what we call a resource park. The resource park is an invention of Albert Albertson, who came up with this idea many decades ago, where he thought that we should make sure that we utilize every effluent stream that comes from a, a, our geothermal power plants. Thirty, thirty-five years ago, I didn't have a clue about what circularity or circular economy was. I learned it from, I am grown up, uh, I'm brought up by my grandparents. They were, uh, they were born before the year 1900. So everything was used in my home, N nothing was thrown away. So circularity, it's actually the economy of my grandma. And I, I put that in my thinking here when I started to work here. The best use case, of course, is the Blue Lagoon. The Blue Lagoon fluid is the fluid that we extract from the ground and we produce electricity from and hot water from. And then it goes off to the, uh, goes off to the Blue Lagoon where it's a hugely popular tourist attraction. Uh, located right next to our Svastinki power plant. From a, a geothermal resource, you always have a little bit of CO2 emission. It's natural CO2 that comes from the ground, but it goes out a little bit quicker when you start utilizing the resource. So we have a little bit of CO2 emission from our power plants. It's all condensed, and we have a plant right next to our Svastinki plant that is utilizing electricity and water. They use that to produce hydrogen and then they add the CO2 that we have that's emitting from our plant and change the hydrogen into methane. It was intended for uh, fuel mix for cars and vehicles, and, uh, but most of it, I think, was exported to Holland or, or Sweden, or I, I don't remember. It's, it, it's, it's an extremely common chemical, methanol, in all kinds of industries. And that is one way of cleaning up. We took gas, which in the past was went to the atmosphere. Now we, we cleaned it up and made clean fuel out of it, if you will. Pokud vám jde už teď hlava kolem z toho, co všechno se dá vyrobit z geotermálního odpadu, věste, že Islandiané zašli ještě mnohem dál. Albert Alberson nám vyprávěl o jiné islandské geotermální elektrárně, v níž se využívá slaná voda z Atlantiku k chlazení a zároveň se tato voda přirozeně čistí pomocí lávy. A tato extrémně čistá ořátá voda se pak používá na něco, co by bez využití odpadního tepla nemělo s udržitelným rozvojem nic společného. Part of it goes to a fish farm. And the, this fish farm, Stolt Sea Farm Iceland, they are growing tropical fish up in Iceland. So we have a power plant, combined heat and power as all the plants here, all the faces here. We have a fish farm growing tropical fish. Then we have two other companies for fish drying. The image of Iceland is that it's clean and pure, but I think that's par partly because there is not that many of us. Mm -hmm. So I think we may think that we are cleaner and uh, more resourceful than other nations, but I'm not sure that we are. I think we just uh, take certain things for granted, mm -hmm. such as the, all the energy we have available to us. I look like an idiot with this ice cream <laughs> no, talking no, to no. you. <laughs> okay. yeah.